Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new, welcome to my channel. My name is Stephanie Yates, Anya Buile, Steph Anya for short, and I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing some of the top tips that I utilize with my clients to help them heal after a breakup. If you're curious, stay tuned. Let's talk about today's sponsor, BetterHelp. BetterHelp is an online platform that can help get you connected with the therapist so that you can meet in a private online virtual space. I see a lot of my clients virtually. I think my practice actually is like 80% virtual at this point. And a lot of my clients like the ability to be able to talk to somebody in the comfort of their own home instead of having to come into an unfamiliar place to talk about very sensitive topics. BetterHelp has over 20,000 plus therapists who specialize in different things, have different licenses so if you're looking for a couples therapist a family therapist an individual therapist all you have to do is fill out a questionnaire that they have online and within 48 hours they will let you know who you've been paired up with and the best part is if you just don't feel like you're connecting with that therapist or there's something different that you want to try you can change therapists at absolutely no cost to you there are over 3 million people who are using better help if you'd like to join them please use my link below at betterhelp.com slash stephania. Thank you, BetterHelp, for sponsoring this portion of the video. All right, so I wanted to do this video because a lot of my clients, regardless of age, are coming into therapy specifically because they're trying to process life after a relationship that they thought was gonna make it all the way to the end, or even if they knew it wasn't, they might even feel guilty or shameful about how long they stayed in a dead end relationship. And what we find at the end of a relationship sometimes is somewhat of an identity crisis. So much of who we are can be created or cultivated by who we spend a lot of our time with. And when we're no longer serving those people and they're no longer serving us, it can be really difficult to move on to the next chapter of our lives. So today I wanna to give you some practical tips, things that you can try, things that have been helpful for my clients and my friends that you might be able to utilize to help you move on and get to a phase in your life where you have processed emotionally this past relationship. First tip is identifying your triggers and creating a plan to navigate them and reintroduce them into your life. So when we're talking about a breakup, we're talking about specific triggers that might prompt memories of that relationship, whether they are good or bad memories. So maybe there's a song you guys used to love to listen to together. Maybe there are shows you used to watch together. Maybe there's a certain street that you used to always take a walk down and now you avoid these places because they remind you of the person that you loved and the relationship that you saw going however far that you envisioned it going and when you're in that place you start limiting your own life experiences. You know, all of a sudden, you don't watch the show you used to watch. I've seen it to an extreme where I have clients who can't even use certain streaming platforms because it reminds them of being in that relationship. Certain songs turns into a certain album, turns into the entire artist. You won't listen to that artist anymore. And what happens, we just see these small triggers really manifesting into much larger triggers that are extremely inconvenient to navigate. So if you can, identify the things that you are avoiding after this relationship and start working with your therapist, with your friends, on your own, on developing a plan for reintroducing those things into your life. You know, if we were to stick with that song example, maybe the first thing you do is listen to some songs by that artist. Maybe something recent that came out well after you guys were even together, for example. Then you can maybe go back to that album and then you can maybe allow yourself the opportunity to listen to those songs that are particularly prompting you to feel sad, to feel anxious, to feel hopeless. And you reintegrate those things back into your life and it won't be easy. You want to make sure you're doing it at a time where you can really process what's happening. It's okay if you're sitting in your car, you got a box of Kleenex, you know you're gonna cry, that is okay work with yourself and allow yourself the opportunity to fully process what this prompt or trigger means to you at this point in your life. Here's a big one, and this is my biggest focus with my clients. Be honest with yourself about your contribution 
to the downfall of that relationship. What I hear more often is people giving me a laundry list of reasons why their ex never deserved them, why they've gotta start asserting their worth. And you know, those things are important, right? We need to know what our standards are and be sure to uphold them and enforce boundaries when needed. But what I really rarely hear in those initial conversations is a sense of accountability. And it can't just be, oh, I picked the wrong people. I'm sure that is a factor, right? But if you keep doing that, let's get more specific. Why are you attracted to people that make you feel a certain way? What have you witnessed or experienced earlier on prior to this relationship that supported that choice? What do you do that keeps those behaviors going, right? Are you not good at vocalizing when something makes you uncomfortable, for example? Or are you short tempered and you yell and they yell and the next thing you know, it's becoming physical. Be very, very honest with yourself because this is the only way that we can put some sort of plan in place to prevent this from happening in the future. If we recognize that maybe you have poor emotional regulation skills, for example, then we can start talking about coping skills to help you calm down when you feel triggered. That could help de-escalate your arguments with partners in the future. This is what we have to be focused on because there's absolutely nothing you can do about that ex. We cannot change how that ex treats people. We cannot change how that ex treated you. But what we can do is focus on what you have control and influence over and assuring that we use that to the best of our ability going forward in your other relationships. And the next one, brace yourself, okay? Cause not everyone's going to agree with this, but I do find value with my clients who have a particular fascination or obsession with the previous relationship. Like it is impacting your friendships, impacting your family relationships, impacting your work relationships because you feel that impacted by what happened in the past. I would challenge you to go through and delete some of the pictures that you all have together. Why? Because when we get to this point in the exercise with helping a client heal from a breakup, this is where I actually get the most resistance. I could hear for months from a client, some clients years, about how awful this person was, how bad that time in their life was. And then I say, well, let's go through some of these pictures and get rid of them, make room for your new life. Because I'll have clients who don't wanna get on certain apps because you know they have their ex's number and that person's gonna be suggested to them, for example. And so they are constantly avoiding reminders of that relationship. So I say, okay, let's go through some of these pictures. Let's delete some of these memories and make room for your new life. And what typically happens is that person eventually has to admit they don't really wanna let that person go. They don't really wanna let that relationship go. That focusing on that time in their life is part of what's been giving their life now meaning. Even if it's anger, they are using that anger as a source of their identity. They're using the bitterness and jadedness as a source of their identity. They're using it as a reason to keep people away, for example. And so this exercise, if you're struggling with the idea of deleting pictures or you know, at least moving them to a folder that you don't have easy access to, that might be an indication that you're still holding on to that relationship and even more reason to get some professional support to help you understand more about why. Write them a goodbye letter. Maybe the relationship ended on terms that you're not necessarily happy about or comfortable with or sure about. You just feel something unfinished. Maybe you never said what you needed to say to them. Writing them a goodbye letter now, whether you actually mail this out or throw it away or burn it or keep it, doesn't matter. But the important thing is the catharsis of getting your thoughts and emotions out, allowing yourself the opportunity to cry and make connections and maybe listen to a song that reminds you of them, whatever it takes for you to be able to release those feelings, those stressors, those fears. And it's not gonna just fix it. 
but it will help you at least make sense or put words around what you're experiencing. Because I believe that with language, there's power. If we have the language to articulate something, then we are one step closer to finding a solution. Relatedly, write a hello letter to yourself, to your new self, the person you want to be. Start exploring what you want your life to look like now, okay? If we are so hyper-focused on the past, how can we ever set ourselves up in the present for the future? So start allowing yourself to dream again. My clients sometimes find themselves in a depression after a breakup because they just don't know who they are without that relationship. You know, maybe they were preparing themselves to be a spouse. Maybe they were envisioning children. Maybe they have children with this person. And now they're like, I don't know how to be a single parent, for example. And these things are very real experiences, very valid feelings, but I don't want you to feel stuck there. So the only way we can start making some sort of progress is for us to have some sort of finish line in mind. So maybe you always wanted to go back to school or maybe you wanted to pick up the guitar or maybe you always wanted to redecorate this room that reminds you so much of them. Start allowing yourself the opportunity to be inspired again, to envision a life that maybe wasn't even possible when you were in that relationship. Maybe your partner hated to travel and you always wanted to see certain places. Now you have the ability to do that. There are always pros and cons to every situation. And even if you feel like you've been hyper-focused on the negative aspects of a breakup, Trust me, there are some positives to that experience that looking back in life, you'll be like, thank goodness, I use that time in a way to help reinvent myself. And relatedly, if you don't wanna write a letter, that's okay, but definitely at least make a list. What do you want to be doing? Your life doesn't end with that relationship, even if it feels that way. You are a person outside of your relationship to anybody else. You're not just someone's mother. You're not just someone's brother. You're not just someone's teacher. You are a person that matters. You're important no matter how you serve the other people in your life. So start making a list of the things that are important to you, the values that you have, what's so important for your next steps. And that just opens, continues to open your mind to new possibilities. We're trying to get out of a rut here. You see a theme, we're getting out of a rut, we're opening our mind, we're allowing hope back into our lives. And lastly, of course, get a therapist. Why get a therapist? Now, obviously I'm slightly biased because this is what I do, but I think what happens a lot of times after a breakup is we can exhaust our social resources. So maybe you're accustomed to talking to your family or talking to your friends. And when you are in a place where they are your only source of support, sometimes you start feeling like a burden. Now, whether it's true or not, doesn't even matter. Because if you start to sense that they don't wanna hear about your troubles, you'll start sharing less and less. Or on the opposite end, I see people begin to overshare, to compensate, to hold people's interest. And that ends up creating a very toxic cycle where your relationships outside of that last one could actually suffer. And so we don't want that to happen. We want you to not waste a lot of time trying to figure out on your own what went wrong, what can I do to get them back? It's better to just get an objective perspective from someone who is talking to people about these things every day and can share with you maybe things that have been helpful for other clients. That I think is one of the easiest, quickest things that you could do that doesn't require you to have to do a lot of self work to get started. Uh, obviously the process of therapy is nothing but self work, but it's something you could look into doing right now. If you don't have the resources to find a therapist, I always like to say that there are other resources. If you can't pay on your own, certain insurances will pay for for free. A lot of insurance providers are actually completely covering the fee for virtual services, for example. There are grants, there are on-campus clinics. 
If you're looking for mental health support, you'll probably be able to find it. Obviously, the more funds you have, a lot of times the quicker you'll be able to access that support. But if you are very determined to find a therapist, you can find an affordable therapist utilizing some of those methods. Those are some of the most effective tools that I use with my clients when they're coming to me about a breakup. And there are honestly so many more things that we do i have clients that i've been working with processing a breakup for a very long time and it's beautiful when you can see them get those new opportunities move into that new place make new friends get into a healthy relationship get engaged like it's so rewarding to be a part of that process and see that. And I want the same for you guys, you know, share if you have a tool that was really helpful for you coming out of a breakup, please share that in the comments below. I'd love to know what's the most successful for you. And remember to check out my description box below for the link for better help. If you'd like to get started looking for a therapist today. Again, my name is Stephanie Yates Ayubwile, Stephania for short. I ask that you like this video, share it with a friend, share it with a few friends, subscribe to my channel, turn on the bell notification so you know every time that I upload. And I thank you so much for watching all the way until the end. You didn't have to, and it helps me so, so much. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh.